Hello, everyone. <laughs> Happy New England um, spring. I'm so <laughs> glad that you're here. And so uh, people have covered a lot of what I wanted to cover. We have the same story. A lot of us um, went to school here, and we've talked about the resources here and the fact that you have brilliant classmates. And so I'm going to cover um, a different aspect. But first, um, I want to talk to you about my work and what I do. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Public Health. And I do research related to the work environment and how what you do as work influences your health and your health behavior. And in doing that, um, when I first started thinking about doing that, I had two choices. I either had to go with a camp that dealt with health promotion in the workplace, telling people to quit smoking, or go to the camp that dealt with occupational health, um, trying to keep people safe in the workplace. But I thought both were important. But when I was studying um, graduate school, it wasn't something that I saw any group doing. And so at first, because I went to nursing school, I chose to start with the people who were doing health promotion because as a nurse, I was very used to doing health promotion, helping people be healthy, help helping people quit smoking and helping people lose weight and things like that. But then not addressing the fact that there are aspects of their jobs that's contributing to the smoking and contributing to the, to the weight issues and other health behaviors they were having. And so I started graduate school with this camp of health promotion and learning how to do health promotion well. Well, luckily for me, I read a book by Paul Farmer. It was edited by Paul Farmer. And there was a woman in it called, um, who wrote a chapter called Nancy Krieger. And she talked about the social determinants of health, how you have to think about society when you're thinking about health, when you're designing health promotion programs. But a lot of her work was in trying to explain population distribution of disease. And so I was very interested in her work, but it still wasn't the area I wanted, which was that I wanted action. I wanted to change um, the work environment to improve health. Then um, after graduate school, I went to Johns Hopkins. I did a master's in nursing and a master's in public health. And after doing that, I was working in, um, with a group that just did uh, uh, occupational health, where we're trying to keep workers safe. And while there, we were using Nancy's work. And while using that, I learned about a group at the Dana Faber Cancer Institution who were bringing these two ideas together, an idea that I thought was mine, that I talked about all the time. <laughs> I found that there were actually people at the Dana Faber who had been writing about this idea for years and were doing experiments showing that actually, when you address health promotion and health protection, that's when you're trying to get someone to quit smoking, you don't just talk about the smoking, the habit, but you also talk about what's in the workplace that makes them smoke. You talk about the fact that when smokers um, quit smoking, they lose the break they get from smoking. And so I was surprised to find all this work, and that was part of why I applied to Harvard. So for me, the decision to come here was really sad. There were not too many people doing what I was what I wanted to do. But um, for many of you, it might not be the same way. But what you have to remember is the fact that those were people at the Nafaba Cancer Institute. But I was able to apply to the Harvard School of Public Health and to work with this group. And they were thinking in that way, not just because of the work that um, their exposure, but because some of them were working with people at the business school and at the School of Kennedy, at the Kennedy School of Government. And um, through that, that informed the kind of work they're doing. So the, the moral of this, this whole story is the fact that there are thought leaders here. And the fact that we get these myriad of influence that actually shapes how we study things and shapes how we think things and um, really means that a lot of times the main people who are leaders in your field will be here at Harvard. And especially for those of you from the School of Public Health, how many of you are from the School of Public Health? Yay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> We're the best here, just so you know. <laughs> so for those of you from the School of Public Health, so I want you to think about the Schools of Public Health and think about what's so different about us here at Harvard. It's the fact that it's not just that we have a top School of Public Health. It's one of the top three. It's been one of the top three for a long time. But it's 
also within a top university. That's not something that many schools of public health can boast of. And the one fantastic thing about the School of Public Health is the diversity. And it, you know, the diversity is not just at the School of Public Health, it's something that is encouraged at Harvard. And um, the diversity is in such ways that it's not just about race, ethnicity, or immigration status, but it's in so many ways. The year I graduated, I graduated with a student who used to be the vice president of Uganda. But in our class too, we had a student who um, is an AIDS orphan from Uganda. And it was quite interesting to be in class with these two people and listen to them talk about health, international health, and, and just listen to their different perspective of Uganda and how their Uganda seemed so different. And you find that too in a lot of classes because um, you find a diversity of opinions and a diversity of people who've risen from different ways. You, and you're at Harvard, you're going to meet a lot of very privileged people, but you're also going to meet people who've come up um, in different ways. So in, in talking about that, I, I want to talk about my path and how I got here. As I said, I'm a nurse. And I think I was a really good nurse when I um, worked as a nurse. But the thing is, if I was in Nigeria where I grew up and where my family came from, I would never have been a nurse. It wasn't, I became a nurse because I'm female and I'm Igbo, and when people who are female and Igbo come here, most of them are directed towards nursing. Because when you're a nurse, then you can easily um, make money and go to school at the same time. And it's an easy way to get a job. And when I finished high school, I came here because my mom was a doctoral um, student in the DC area, and my sisters and I came to join her. And when I finished high school, I did really well. And my, my classmates were talking about applying to schools, and I applied. But I didn't realize I wasn't the same as they were because I, my uh, mom was a doctoral student, but we were immigrants, and we didn't have the right kind of visa. So after I got admitted, I realized I couldn't afford to go on to university. So I worked um, and, and then um, went to a community college where my mom was teaching part-time for some time until I got my green card and I was able to go to nursing school. And then from there, uh, I could work as a nurse and when I got my citizenship, of course, it made it so much easier. I could work and then go to school. But I'm telling you the story because it's what you find amongst your classmates here. You find that there are just so many stories and it informs the discourse in the classroom because when you have a president and a Nate's often in a class, you just, it just enriches the discussion that you have and it broadens your perspective. But it, it's also that our ideas are improved by questions. And so when you have a diversity of people in the room, there are questions that you get asked that you've never been asked. And um, even though that I was, my, you know, my research brought me here because this was the only place where people were thinking the way I was, I was thinking, it's um, the way I think about health promotion and health protection has actually broadened from being here because when I started presenting my work, I would get questions about family, and that was something I hadn't thought of, and, but that a lot of my classmates had thought of, and so that informed my own work. And so my work now includes thinking about workers' families and how what people do could influence their family relationships and the health outcomes of their family members. So all this just to um, get you to think about this wonderful school and the opportunities here, and one thing else that I was very involved in as a student was in student government. And that's something that, um, as you can imagine at Harvard, where you come the first day and usually you think that you, get, you have to force someone to be the president, but you come the first day and I'm always the president of everything. And I get there and everybody in the room wants to be the president. So. <laughs> And so uh, you, student government was very different here because there were a lot of leaders and a lot of people who really 
wanted to do things. And we did a lot as students. We organized a lot of um, forums and we invited very important people. And I, I was surprised by the people who agreed to come and by the number of the caliber of people who came because students invited them. And, but we also, apart from in, um, doing programs that were geared towards um, in, people from the outside and informing um, people in the community, we actually did a lot of programs to also improve us as human beings and to inform us. So um, in my year, we were very concerned about getting jobs and we invited people from organizations where we wanted to work to come and talk to us. And people love talking to Harvard audiences, so they came. And so that's something for you to think of. And then we, we did a lot of different things and we got support from the university to do a lot of them. Um, one of the forums that the, I, I was president of the Africa Health Forum and we band together with the, um, the GLBT group, the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transen um, Transsexual, Transgender group to do this forum in which we talked about being out and abroad. So it was a forum where we brought people from the UN, people from WHO to talk about issues that the students who were members of our group would think of um, when they go out to work for the UN in African countries or elsewhere. And, so, and, and then we band together with the South uh, um, Asian Student Organization to organize this big um, forum on Africa and India and um, health issues there. Um, so just to encourage you that when you come here, you're going to be amongst leaders and that you get the opportunity to actually do a lot. You get the opportunity to not just study, but also to have a good time. As you can imagine, um, you know, the one thing with Harvard, people come, <laughs> there's competition. That's, that's one thing that you would expect with the kind of personalities that come here. But the, 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 the competition goes down to everything. You're really good at, you get to be very good at everything, in, including knowing how to party well. You know, so, <laughs> so you can't be a slacker on any topic. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So just to tell you, come here, you will really enjoy yourself and you get a lot of opportunities to make a difference. Thank you.